Hello and welcome to Five Year Club video number 187. So, um, what's up with video number 187? I did not come up with a topic for today, but I tried, but it just didn't happen. There wasn't enough inspiring stuff in the news or on Quora or whatever. I did transfer a good chunk into savings today, so if you need to transfer a chunk of money into savings from your checking account preemptively so you don't make stupid purchases, uh, this is your reminder. Tonight we're going to read uh, the Japanese Family Storehouse story number four and I found a copy on Google Books so apparently you know buying this was a complete waste whatever I like having the real life version I'm an old geezer now it's okay to not have something on a computer let's get going ancient on account and modern cash down Ancient simplicity is gone. With the growth of pretense, the people of today are satisfied with nothing but finery, and nothing but what is beyond their station or purse. You have only to look at the way our citizens' wives and daughters dress. They can hardly go further. To forget one's proper place is to invite the wrath of heaven. Well, that is a very, um, that is a very, like, feudal Japan thing to say. <laughs> Even the august nobility are satisfied with the clothes of nothing more splendid than Kyoto Habutai silk. And in the military class, the formal black dress of five crests is considered ill-suited to none, from minor retainers to the greatest daimyo. But of recent years, ever since some ingenious Kyoto creatu creatures started the fashion every variety of splendid material has been used for men's and women's clothes and the drapers sample books have blossomed in a riot of color what with delicate ukiyo stencil patterns and multicolored imperial designs and dappled motifs in wash graded tents men must now seek in other worlds for an exotic effect for every device on earth has been exhausted Paying for his wife's wardrobe or his daughter's wedding trousseau has lightened the pockets of many a merchant and blighted his hopes in business. A courtesan's daily parade of splendor is made in the cause in the cause of earning a living. Amateur beauties, when they are not blossom viewing in spring, maple viewing in autumn, or being married, can manage well enough without dressing in layers of conspicuous silks. Not long ago, in a tailor's shop set back a little from Muromachi Street, and displaying on its curtains the crest of a fragrant citron, there was a craftsman who tailored stylish clothes with even more than the usual Kyoto dexterity. Some piles of silk materials and cotton wadding were deposited with him that he enjoyed a constant prospect of the mount of clothes, without stirring a step from his shop. Though it was always a rush to remove the tacking stitches and apply the smoothing iron in time, each year on the first day of the fourth moon in readiness for the season's change of clothes, even as the impatient cuckoo sounded its first notes in the skies above Mount Machikane. See, I thought this would refer to a cuckoo clock, but this is 333 years ago. I'm not sure they had cuckoo clocks. So this is an actual cuckoo when there were cuckoo birds. Maybe there still are in Japan, I don't know. Uh, impatient cuckoo sounded its first notes in the skies above Mount Machikane. He had ready in his shop a fresh array of splendidly colored summer kimono. Among them, one might have seen garments of three distinct layers, a scarlet crepe enclosed within translucent walls of delicate white silk, and garments with sleeves and neck pieces stiffened with padding. Such things had been unheard of in former days. One step further, and we might have been wearing imported Chinese silks as work clothes. In recent clothing edicts were truly good for ugh, in the recent clothing edicts were truly for the good of every one of us in every province in the land and on this and on second thoughts we are grateful. 
A merchant wearing fine silks is an ugly sight. Homespun is not only more suited to his station, but he looks smarter in it. With samurai, of course, for whom an imposing appearance is essential in the course of duty, it is not desirable that even the most servantless among them should dress like an, or like an ordinary person. In Edo, where peace reigns changeless as the pine, on foundations as firm as the ageless rocks of Tokiwa Bridge, Draper's establishments were recently opened in Hancho to cater for the great lords. They were branches of Kyoto firms and proudly advertised their crests in all the guides of, to trade, managers and clerks, in single-minded devotion to duty, applied their united efforts to the task of securing orders from the various great mansions which favored them with patronage. Never relaxing for a moment uh, from matters of business, they displayed eloquence and finesse, judgment and ingenuity. Expert in accountancy, and never deceived by a dubious coin, they would gouge the eyes from a living bull for profit. That's pretty... Uh, that's pretty severe, guys. Gouge the eyes from a living bull for profit. Are you willing to gouge the eyes from a living bull to pay off your credit card? Are you willing to gouge the eyes from a living bull to pay off that student loan? To pass beneath the tiger gate in the darkness of the night, to prowl a thousand miles in search of custom, such things they accepted as no more than necessary duties, and early next day, while the stars were still shining overhead, they would be hard at work in the shops, checking weights on rods of their scales. From dawn till dusk they courted the favor of customers, but things were not longer as they used to be. But things were no longer as they used to be. The broad and fertile plain of Musashi were still there, but every inch of the ground had been exploited, and there were no easy pickings left. Formerly, on the occasion of a lord's wedding or a distribution of presents, it had been possible for the contractor, with the friendly cooperation of the landlord's chamberlain, to do a little trade on satisfactory terms, but nowadays, with tenders invited from all sides, the expectation of profit was meager and the incidental expense more than balanced it. The true condition of these businesses was a sad story, and orders were supplied to the great households for prestige only. Not only that, but the greater part of the sales were on credit, and accounts remained unsettled year after year. Such money would have been more profitably invested even with a Kyoto banker. The shops were in constant difficulty over the shortage of ready cash to negotiate new bills of exchange, and as a result, and also because it was unthinkable suddenly to close down the businesses which had only just been opened, they were obliged to limit themselves to small-scale transactions only. But, do what they might, the accounts balanced no better, and before long the main shops in Kyoto were closed and only the Edo branches remained, with their losses running into hundreds and thousands of kanmei. Each firm began devising methods of cutting expenses while the position was still retrievable. But other ways of trade existed, had they known. In Surago Cho, a name Suraga Suruga Suruga Cho, a name which brings back memories of the gleam of old Koban, a man called Mitsui Koroimon, risking what capital he had on hand, erected a deep and lofty building of 18 yards frontage and 80 yards depth, and opened a new shop. His policy was to sell everything for cash without the inflated charges customary in credit sales. There were more than 40 skilled clerks in his office, constantly under the master's watchful eye, and to each he assigned full charge of one type of cloth, one for gold brocades, one for hino and gunmai silks, one for 
Habutai, one for damask, one for scarlets, one for hemp and overskirts, one for woolen goods, and so on. Having divided the shop into departments, in this manner, he willingly supplied anything which his customers asked for, however trifling, a scrap of velvet, an inch square, a piece of imported damask, suitable for the cover of an eyebrow tweezer, enough scarlet satin to make a spearhead flag or a single detachable cuff of Rayuman silk. Whenever a samurai required a formal waistcoat for an immediate audience with his lord, or someone was in urgent need of a gown for a dress occasion, Kuriman asked the messenger to wait, marshaled a score or so of the tailors on his staff, manufactured the garment on the spot, and delivered it immediately to the customer. By such means, the business flourished, and the average daily sales were said to amount to 150 ryo. The shop was a marvel of convenience to all. To look at, the master was no different from other men. He had the usual eyes, nose, hands, and feet. But in his aptitude for his trade, a difference lay. He was the model of a great merchant. Neatly folded in the alphabetical in the alphabetically arranged drawers of his shop were all the materials of, Jap of Japan and countries overseas, a varied selection of antique silks, Lady Chujo's homespun mosquito net, Hitamaro's akashi crepe, Amida's bib, a strip of Asashina's flying crane kimono, the mattress which Daruma Taishi used for meditation, Rin Wasai's bonnet, and Sanjo Kokaji, Kokaji's sword, sword sheaths. Absolutely nothing was missing. A firm with such well-filled stock books is indeed fortunate. All right, so that, that was... I'm not quite sure I understand this story yet. So the first part of the story seems like it's complaining about people wearing fine clothing. And then the second part of the story seems to talk about a particular uh, drapery store that accepted cash only and delivered goods on the spot. So let's see if I can find the transition here. So here they talk about that the samurai have special clothing needs. So samurai have special clothing needs. And uh, Edo was very popular for these draping merchants. But it wasn't very profitable, right? Because they say it would have been more profitable to just put that money into a, a bank. And then... Oh, so it says that the people in Edo, the, the draperies in Edo, they kept doing business the same way, but it wasn't working. But other ways of trade existed. And now this guy is, you know, another way of trade. As he was making things on the spot when people need them. And I guess these people who weren't doing well, they were all uh, competing for the money from the lords. And they kind of competed themselves out of business. Let's see. Let's reread the beginning and see if this idea of changing businesses comes back. Ancient simplicity is gone. With the growth of pretense, the people of today are satisfied with nothing but finery, with nothing but what is beyond their station or purse. Okay, so it's basically saying like clothing is in real demand. Let's see. But of recent years, ever since some ingenious Kyoto creatures started the fashion, every variety of splendid material has been used for men's and women's clothing. So maybe the moral of this story is don't get so stuck in your business that you just stay in this unprofitable business forever. Like, look up and try something new. And don't go the same way that all the other people are going around you, especially if nobody's making any money. That's what I'm going to take away from the story. All right, that's it for 5 Year Club video number 187. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope that uh, you can 
make a clothing store and fit a bunch of samurai with quality clothing. Sounds good. Have a fabulous evening.